हेलो एवरी वन इन दिस सेगमेंट वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट डॉक्टर ऑफ कैवेट एम्टर द लेटिन फ्रेज कैवेट एम्टर मीन्स लेट द बायर बी वेयर द डॉक्टर ऑफ कैवेट एम्टर अंडर द सेल ऑफ गुड्स एक्ट टॉक्स अबाउट द ऑनर्स ऑफ द बायर इन असरटेनिंग द रिस्क इन अ कॉन्ट्रैक्ट हाउ एवर दिस डज नॉट फ्री द सेलर कम्प्लीटली फ्रॉम एनी रेस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड इन डिटेल अबाउट द डॉक्टर ऑफ कैवेट एम्टर The doctrine of caveat emptor means the responsibility lies on the buyer of goods, and he must perform due diligence before the purchase of the good. It is expected from the buyer to be alert in a contract of sale. He cannot hold the seller responsible for inferior goods unless the contract is based on fraud. The doctrine of caveat emptor is generally applicable in the case of property transaction, but it can also be applied in the sale of goods and other services. Section 16 of the Sale of Goods Act. defines it as there is no implied warranty or conditions as to the quality of the fitness of for any particular purpose of goods supplied under the such a contract of sale the doctrine of caveat emptor the seller makes the goods available in the market and it is the responsibility of the buyer to inspect them well before buying if the buyer later discovers a defect in the goods that could have been detected earlier by him he cannot sue the seller for inferior quality the responsibility lies with the buyer he can shift it to the seller under the given conditions first if the buyer has informed the seller about the purpose of the purpose before making the pur- purchase if the buyer relies on the technical expert access, uh, expertise and experience of the seller if the goods are of a description that the seller supplies in his normal course of business exception to the doctrine of caveat emptor the doctrine of caveat emptor and its exceptions will help us understand the situation in which the responsibility is not put only on the buyer fitness of the product for the buyer's purpose of purchase as per section 16 clause 1 the buyer informs the seller about his purpose behind the purchasing the goods and the seller does not sell the goods accordingly to that knowingly it relieves the buyer from the responsibility in the case it becomes a duty of the seller to supply the right goods to the buyer sale of goods under the trade name if the buyer purchases a branded product or a product sold under a trade name then he is assured of the quality that is associated with that brand name the seller in this case cannot be held responsible if in this case the buyer is not relying on the skill or judgment of the seller but on the implied quality standard that is brand offers goods sold by description if the buyer purchases the goods based on their description which matches the product then the seller cannot be held liable the seller will be held liable only if he provides an incorrect description of the goods merchantable quality of goods under section 16 clause 2 the seller must provide goods of merchantable quality to the buyer this means that the goods must be fit for resale in the market and must pass the market standard when the buyer purchases the goods from a seller based on a description and the seller deals in the goods of that description then the goods must be of merchantable quality if the goods are not of the merchantable quality then the seller can be held liable for the same sale by simple inspection the doctrine of caveat tempter does not apply if the buyer purchases the goods after careful inspection of a sample of the goods that he intends to buy and the seller supplies goods different from that sample trade uses as per section 16 clause 3 The rule of cabin center does not apply if the seller deviates from informing the buyer about the quality of the fitness of goods and product. There is an implied condition or warranty on the condition of the goods. Next is fraudulent representation by the seller. If the seller provides fraudulent information about the goods or conceals some important information about them, the buyer is not responsible. That's it for today, guys.